In this video, Randy fixes our hot water heater and we also share our tips for cleaning out our trailer to get ready for our first camping trip of the season. Hi guys, I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And this is Zephyr Travels. And in today's video, we are gonna get the trailer cleaned out because we haven't used it in almost six months. Right, we haven't even touched it since we came home in March. And uh, we have to get it ready for a rally, which starts next week. So uh, yeah, we have to clean it out and get it ready. Another thing we need I need to do is the hot water heater um, stopped working. And I think I know what it needs to be fixed, and so I'll, I'll walk you through that and show you what I did to fix the, to fix the hot water heater. And otherwise, it's just getting the trailer ready because we've got a rally to go to in uh, another week. Yep. It's going to be our first rally, and our first rally in a year, and our first time out in the trailer since March. That's true. So, so we have to get going. Right, and we'll take you along with us. So come on along. <clears throat> well, things are not where they should be. All that stuff goes underneath the cabinet here. Mm -hmm. Needs to be cleaned out first. Right. Probably Continues. need to clean out the refrigerator. Yep. And the floors need to be cleaned and cart. We'll pull the rugs out and wash them. Needs, I guess, probably needs to be vacuumed. Yeah, yeah, we're we'll gonna we'll pull a vacuum in here and vacuum it out. Whoa. We, we, we got to do that. Our windows have all got the um, insulation in them, so that needs to be popped out because we don't need that. I put all that in there when we were traveling back because I thought maybe it might it would keep it a little warmer in here, but also. Maybe knock some of the noise when we stopped at rest areas. Okay. Be the first thing we do is take that out. Yeah. Got some stuff to put away. The cushions will need to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of organize everything back again. Yeah. It's going to take us, well. well take we're we're working. We get going. Yeah, well, we'll work on it to this, you know, what we can do the day. I think the cushions, cleaning the cushions will be another day. Wow. You know, I can do that while you're resting. Yeah. And then, um, but we can get started on it today and get things. Yeah, we'll get the floor and the, take the rugs out and vacuum and clean the floor. Do you think we should do that? Yeah. Yeah, and get the stuff out that doesn't need to be in here. Yeah, like. <laughs> the pile of books. That, that were in our ottoman that we had that broke and we, ne we probably hardly ever used these books okay all right all right well we're gonna get going okay
mentioned that we're having trouble with a hot water heater, or I was having trouble with a hot water heater on my trip back from California, and it actually just stopped working about halfway through the trip. Now, I've done some research, some YouTube research, and particularly a YouTube by um, RVing with Tito. He does a really good job of explaining all electronics and how everything works in here and how to troubleshoot it. And he gave me some really good tips in his video on, on what I should look for. And I believe I found the problem. And so I'm going to kind of quickly show you what the issue is. So first we're going to go in and turn the power on to the hot water heater. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to go over here to the bathroom where our hot water heater uh, switch is. And turn on the lights and see in here. If you look right here. These are our hot water um, switches. I'm going to turn on the propane because I don't want to run the electric. And I've added these lights on here because we typically will not um, leave the hot water heater on all day. And this is a good way for us to know that we, you know, after we're done taking our showers or anything for the day, we can shut the hot water heater off. Or we know that one of us has turned it on during the night to make sure we have hot water. So we have it on. There's no warning lights here. So let's walk back out to the uh, hot water heater because it should be fired up and blasting uh, propane. So I'm back at the hot water heater and we have power leads here and they do two different things. One of them um, turns the propane on and off so that the um, propane is only working when you put the switch on and it shuts off when you're not running it. The second one works a hot temperature switch so there's a thermostat in here that will turn on and off when you reach full temperature and basically what you're trying to understand here is that um, right now nothing's working it should be running because we have propane on and i bring my voltmeter up let's see if we can test anything here Okay, let's see if you can see my voltmeter. So if I test here, you can see I've got 12 volts. This is another temperature sensor. And if you test on the other side of this, and this is a thermo fuse. So if I test here on the thermo fuse, nothing. So, so that tells me I've got 12 volt coming into here, but nothing coming out. So it's either going to be the thermo fuse this item or it's going to be the um, thermostat back here. Um, now my testing I determined that it was actually the thermo fuse and I think you can do an ohm resistance test between it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out here and it's not it's not a fuse like that you're going to see you know where you're going to see it's broken um, but the, basically what this is designed for, if there was ever a flash fire in here, this should fail and shut off the propane so that you don't blow up your trailer. So it's fairly important, but they are known to fail. So I am going to replace it. And I went on Amazon and I bought a replacement kit. And so in this kit, it actually has two fuses and it has a set of thermostats. Um, fuse, resistor, capacitor, diode. Um, let's open it up. All right, I've opened up the kit. And you see what you have here. You have two of the thermostats. I'm assuming these are both the thermostats that you need here and here. So if you want to replace both of those, you can. And then two of the fuses and then a jumper wire in case you need it. And it also has the piece of foam that covers the thermostats here. So this is everything you need, but we only really need one of, replace one of the um, thermo fuse. So we're gonna save the rest of this kit for, we're gonna put it in our spare parts kit. And if we ever need these, we'll have them with us and we can replace them. So this is pretty simple. It's going to attach 
here. It's nice that it's got um, material protecting the connection, but it's also kind of in the way. Okay, I can sneak that back just a little bit. Get a there. Okay, so now when I connect this to here. The hot water heater should fire right up because it's still turned on. And it's not. Interesting. One other thing you can do to verify is bypass this fuse. Now you don't want to do this permanently, but for as a temporary solution, if I do this, the hot water heater fires. Pull that off, it shuts right off. I'm wondering if I use the wrong one. I'm gonna try the other one. Here. Nothing. Well, we definitely know it's a fuse, and for whatever reason, these fuses aren't working. So maybe the um, ones I bought from Amazon are no good. Wouldn't be surprised. Well, that was a little unsuccessful. We do know what the problem is, and it's apparently the parts I bought are no good. So I'm going to get a replacement um, uh, thermal fuse for that and I'll put that in and see if that fixes the problem, which it should, and then uh, we'll go from there. the process I use for cleaning these cushions. Now these are an ultra leather material and so they're really a little closer to a vinyl material than a real leather. So I use a combination of simple green, um, OxyClean, and I use that in a bucket of water. I use a very soft brush. This is an upholstery brush for cleaning like leather interior in a car. I use a couple different rags. I use one rag for soapy water, one rag for clean water, and I have two buckets set up over here. These are the two buckets. So this bucket has soapy water in it. It's a combination of OxyClean and water, and this has just pure clean water. So this is my rinse bucket. This is my wash bucket. When I use this brush, I go in here to get soapy clean water. I clean the brush. Before I put it back into the soapy water, I rinse the dirt off of the brush in the clean water. So that's my process. Let's get going. I always want to start by wetting the cushion down. So I just take the rag with soapy water and I'm just going to wet the cushion down like this. And our neighbor's dog is barking. Now our dog's barking at our neighbor's dog. Then I'm going to take the simple green, give it a spray. Now I would like to apply the product to a wet surface as opposed to a dry surface. Use a brush and work it in. Get in 
to these crevices. And if you see any stains or any dirt that's giving you a problem, you want to work it really good with the brush. Now I'm going to take a second rag that's clean, and this is my rinse rag, and it's in the rinse water. And I'm just going to wipe up all the soap off of it. The idea is you really don't want to leave the soap on here because that will attract dirt. So one of the things I always try to do is I always rinse my rags or my brush in the rinse water between applications so that I'm not taking the dirt from the cushion and putting it into my soapy water. I'm trying to keep my soapy water as clean for as long as I can and then have the brush stay clean so when I bring out the product of the soapy water onto here it's not moving dirt from the water onto it too. So that's pretty good. There is a spot on here that's stubborn and I don't know if it's going to come out so what I'm going to try on these spots is a little bit of OxyClean directly. So let me get that. So this is the OxyClean I use. I either use this or the one for laundry. Uh, they both work pretty good. I've noticed the one for carpet and rugs is a little thinner and it's easier to work. The one for laundry is a little thicker. So I tend to use that maybe to mix it in with water, you know, in a bucket. This I can use spray on directly. But I've got a couple spots here. I don't know if I'm going to get them out or not, but I'm going to try the little OxyClean on them and then work them in with the brush. Now the instructions for OxyClean says to let this work for a little bit, let it soak in and work. So I may just, we'll give it a few minutes to work before we try rinsing it off and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes. I've let this kind of sit in here and work its way in. And unfortunately, I think these are gonna be a couple spots that just aren't gonna come out. So we'll take a cloth, a rinse cloth, and we'll just wipe it down. Put in the comments, do you have a process to clean the cushions in your RV? Um, what do you use and how do you do it? And how successful is it? Have you been able to get stains out of it, that uh, puffer stains? Or are you like me and you can get so far, but you can get them clean, but you can't, sometimes there are certain things that just won't come out. I'd like to know. Once they're all washed down, I take another towel, a dry towel, and I just wipe them down get the moisture off of them so they can go back in. And that's pretty much it. All right, we're... It's been a couple of days since we last worked on the hot water heater and I thought we'd you know, finish it up today. I've had the opportunity to go to Camping World and pick up some parts that I needed and I wanted to kind of show you what we got and basically how to tell if one of these thermo fuses are good or not. So. It, Trip to Camping World, we picked up the Dometic uh, replacement part. This is a uh, Atwood Dometic hot water heater. So having the exact replacement part is a good deal. And it's right here in the kit. And with anything like this, it comes with instructions that are in multiple languages. Um, and I did take a look at them a little bit to kind of, <laughs> the biggest thing that got me is, why do they always give you this extra wire? Well, apparently, if this fuse fails the way it's intended to fail, there's a good chance you've burnt this wire and you're gonna to need to replace it. And so that's why they give you this. And so the idea is here is that you could go into the hot water heater and replace it. So I wanted to really show you the difference between a damaged fuse and a good fuse and how can you tell um, if one's good or not. And so I'm taking my multimeter 
and I'm putting it on the ohm setting. And basically this allows me to test continuity. So if I put these two together, if you can see it there, there's a reading. And so that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to take the old one, put one probe on one end of it, just do it like this, and the other probe on the other end, and I need a few extra hands, I guess, there we go. And then if you notice, it's just saying one, it's not really picking up a reading. But if I do the same thing with this one, I'm going to put a probe on this end and a probe on this end. Now you can see I'm picking up an ohm uh, resistance reading. And that's how you're going to tell that you've got a good one. And what I've kind of learned here, I ordered this from this kit from Amazon. Um, it wasn't very expensive. It was less than $10. And both of these, when I do that same test on it, fail that test. So these are no good. I don't know why they end up being no good, but uh, unfortunately, that's the case here. What I'm probably going to do, I have no idea if these, and maybe it's not even worth saving them. These are the thermostats. They're probably not worth hanging on to. Um, so I don't know if even this is worth hanging on to as a uh, spare part kit or not. So I'm probably going to toss it. So now that we know we've got a good one here, we're going to re install this and get the hot water heater working the way it should be. So the installation is very simple. The brown wire here, this um, thermal link just goes right in line. So connect it here like this and connect it here. And that's all we should need to do now I'll go in and turn the hot water heater on and we'll see if it fires up. Now let's see if it's fired up. Now we'll just let that dry a little bit and then we'll put a little top coat over it and it'll look just like new. And it'll protect it from rusting out for years to come. Now for a little top coat.
There, that should protect it. The top coat's also a rust inhibitor, so if I missed a spot or anything, the top coat should work just as well as the primer. Well, I guess we can just unmask and move on to the next project. Well, in cleaning things up around here, I've noticed that these curtains are pretty dirty. So I'm gonna pull them all out and we're gonna wash them and put them back in. Now the trick to washing these, from what we understand, is you don't dry them because they could shrink. Usually what Diane likes to do is then put them out on, in the sun on our deck or something where they can dry a little bit, but she still wants to put them up here when they're just a little bit damp and let them finish drying in place. So let's do that. Now to take them out, there's a couple of screws on each end of the tracks. And so we just take the two screws out on one end and slide the curtains all the way around and take them out that way. So here's the screw that we want to remove. I'm going to pop this out. Don't lose it, it's just a little screw. Pull out the retaining piece and then you're going to do the same down here. Now the screw comes up from underneath and I might need a shorter screwdriver for this. I brought a small one in just in case that works. That will kick it out. Unsnap the ends. And actually, you should be able to just pull the whole thing right out. Uh, pull out the sections it's easier. Like this. Now it'll probably be a day or two before we get these cleaned and back in. So I'm gonna put the little retaining pieces back into the curtain rods so we don't lose them. So I'll tell everybody what's your secret uh, recipe to get the curtain so white? Um, how you, uh, well, how it was recommended to me to wash the curtains in your Airstream is you get OxyClean powder or liquid and soak your curtains in like warm water with uh, OxyClean and uh, just let them set for a little while and when you take them out rinse them out and then you want to hang them dry and when they are uh, almost dry just a little bit damp to the touch you want to rehang them. And that gets the wrinkles out of them? Well for the most part. Now with us today it was it was so warm that we they were dry. They were dry, you know, very quickly. Yeah. So we had to, uh, or Randy had to hang them very quickly. Yeah. But um, yeah, they come pretty clean with that mixture. Yeah. And ours were, I don't know how dirty they were. They were pretty dirty. Yeah, I'm surprised because uh -huh. I think we washed them last, before we left, left last year. Yeah, but you know, we're out in the desert and That's dry true. areas and especially these curtains here, um, we have a nosy dog who likes to stick her head through yeah, them. Yeah, we have uh, our one dog. In fact, probably both dogs like to stick their heads through them, and she likes to get in next to them right. on the ledge there. So, yeah, they do come clean. I've washed them two or three times. Yeah, yeah pretty much every year. Yeah. But one of the things that we need to do is update our map. And this is mostly from our trip last year when we w did the one lap of the U.S. We went down the coast here, crossed through here, up to Nevada, did a little bit of California, Utah. We went into Wyoming, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, and then home. So we got some new stickers to put up. Right. And remember... These are states that we've actually stayed a night or done something. Right, right. So we can do. Where is it? 
Yeah. Here is Alabama. Yep, we stopped at Alabama, spent the night there, and toured Techno RV. Yes. Mississippi? We did Mississippi. We stayed. Stayed in there. Very nice campground there. Yeah, nice state park on the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. So that gets updated. Louisiana, we still haven't done anything. Right. So we have to skip that. Wyoming. Wyoming, we went to the Airstream International Rally. South Dakota. South Dakota, we went to um, Rushmore. Uh, Rushmore. Mm -hmm. Dead Horse. A bunch of different places. Minnesota. Yes, Minnesota. Mall of America. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin, we have to skip, unfortunately. Michigan, we stayed, but we'd already been there before. Yeah. Indiana, because we did the RV museum. Right. Indiana, here. I believe so. Mm -hmm. So maybe our next trip we will fill it up a little bit more. Hopefully. Okay. Now I'm prepping to get ready to go. I have one more thing that I think will just make it for this trailer and I wanted to share it with everybody. Zephyr Travel's license plate. So we gotta swap that out, get rid of this old one. Put that on there. travels. Well, we've completed our cleanup and I want to walk you through and show you what we've done. So come on in. As you can see, the lounge area, the couch, everything's all cleaned. The rugs have been all, or the blankets have all been washed and they're back on here. And we put those on there to protect from the dogs uh, jumping up on here. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then over here, dinette's all been cleaned. Everything's all neatened up. Everything's been put away. The rugs are on the floor. And if we walk back to the back, our beds are all set. Everything's put away. The um, insulation's out of all the windows. Curtains have all been cleaned. And we're actually all packed up and ready to go. So, Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to us, uh, think about subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, and we'd love to have you follow along in our adventures. In our next video, we will be camping. So until then, we'll see you guys down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye.